so this is going to be a mid-September garden update. Tim just came in here and mowed all that tall grass out. I would have filmed it, but y'all, that mower is loud. I didn't think y'all wanted to have to listen to that noise. So we've got a few little areas that here left to weed eat. And then once those are done, uh, we'll be ready to really rock and roll on the fall garden. So this was the bed that I had my green beans planted in that something came through and, and ate all the leaves off and you can see I still have some of these sprigs up here and I left them because they were starting to grow leaves back and then something came back and ate them again. I'm pretty sure it's a rabbit because I saw a rabbit running just outside the garden the other day. This is the bed of peas that y'all saw us on the video the other day with me and London planting the peas. And I'm going to show you guys. Here they are. They're all sprouting up, which is amazing. I tried to pre-plant these in seed pods to try to get ahead of the game on these. And it was just too hot. That they, they, just, they just would not sprout and the ones that did sprout would almost immediately die in that 100 to 110 degree temperatures but now that it's cooling off out here right now our highs are in the mid 80s and as you can see these peas are coming up great so we do have a small project coming up for this bed where we're going to run cattle panels and t-posts down the center of it so that uh, we have a trellis for these peas to grow up because these are climbing peas so this is my turnip bed that y'all seen me struggling with so much. Um, again, now that the weather's cooled down, it's starting to make some progress. Some of these starts that I planted um, last time are still growing. They're getting bigger. And then the little rows of turnip seeds that I planted are now all starting to pop up, which is fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and let these grow a little bit. And then I'll come back at a later date and thin them out. Some of them that I thin out can possibly be transplanted into the empty spaces over here. I did have a few beets that decided they were hanging in there. So I went ahead and left that space for them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not enough to do anything major with. But maybe it's enough to can a jar or two of them. So we'll see. It's my little lemon tree. It's actually grown quite a bit. Um, when I was sick and didn't get out here to water the garden for a couple of days, Every leaf on this tree dried up and fell off, and I thought, oh, that's it. It's dead. But they all started growing back, and they're looking pretty good right now. So these are my two avocado trees that I sprouted from uh, avocado pits, and they are doing well also. I had three of them going. One of them didn't quite make it in the heat, but these other two, as soon as it started cooling down, they literally have started growing about an inch a day since the weather cooled down. So... I'm real excited about these avocado trees. Now these sprouts here, these are Brussels sprouts. And uh, I tried and tried and tried again to plant these in the summer to get them to start growing before the fall garden was ready. And they wouldn't grow, wouldn't grow. And I'd really just pretty much given up on them. Well, they'll be darned if those seeds weren't sitting down in that soil just waiting for it to cool down. Because as soon as it cooled down, they started sprouting right up. So hopefully we'll get some Brussels sprouts as well. Now this, <laughs> this my friends, are broccoli seeds sprouting up and uh, I'm definitely going to fill almost an entire bed with these. Can't really can broccoli because it just comes out really mushy and gross. I don't know if y'all have ever tried it or not, but it just doesn't work out well. But I can freeze this and so that is what we will be doing and part of the broccoli plants We'll be saved in buckets to go in the greenhouse over the winter to see if we can get any of it to grow then as well. So I have these planters here, the, these little um, triangle shaped planters, and they stack on top of each other. So they will make a little grow tower 
I have discovered you can only stack about five high and they start getting kind of destabilized and act like they're going to fall over. So I try not to stack more than five of these at a time. But they are really great for growing things that don't need super long, big, expansive root systems like spinach and lettuce and kale and stuff like that that has tiny little short roots. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how I'm planting these today. So right now in this particular planter, I've got my kale seeds and we're just going to sprinkle a few little seeds in here. See if we can get some growing. And I'm going to go ahead and do five of these just like this and stack them on top of each other. So I like these little popsicle sticks because I can take a sharpie like this and mark on there what these are. And that wood actually eventually breaks down into the dirt and will become basically compost. So, uh, yeah, you don't want your sharpie in there probably, but that part usually doesn't break down. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and plant these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit, handful of this soil and just barely cover the top of these seeds up because these seeds are tiny and they don't need a great big huge root system so I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle just a little bit of soil on top of these and that's all I'm going to do to bury them now this soil that I'm using is a combination of fine mulch and an enriched garden soil which means they have enriched it with um, fertilizer so that you already have fertilizer starting your season out and I got this from a local place um, I got six yards of this mix for $320 and so I've got a big pile of it that I'm using to fill in these pots and also for filling in uh, the top part of my raised beds so guys I was out here and I was working on getting these spinach and lettuce and kale planted yesterday and uh, we had an emergency trip come up to go get more pigs. <laughs> so I had to stop in the middle. So today's the next day and I'm still working on getting these new seeds in the ground. So uh, I will continue on. Okay, so I've got the dirt in this pot. In case anybody wondered where these pots came from, I got these from Dollar Tree. And in the springtime, they'll usually have them on the shelf. However, they sell out really, really quickly because they sell them for $1.25 a piece. Uh, these are the second year that I've used these, and they've held up really well. And uh, you can order them online any time of year, but you have to order a case. Of, I believe it's 36 of them in order to order them online but uh, no they're not a sponsor none of that stuff um, no affiliate links or anything like that that's just you know where I got them and I wanted to share that with you guys so the next thing that I'm getting ready to plant in this stack right here is this is Grand Rapids lettuce and it's kind of a green leafy lettuce which i really absolutely love in salads and on sandwiches and all that good stuff and again these seeds are really really tiny let me show you guys how small these seeds are see those they're pretty small so i'm just going to sprinkle a couple of seeds in each section of this pot here And then I'm going to take a little handful of dry dirt and just barely cover these. They don't need a whole lot of coverage because they're little bitty tiny seeds. So we're just going to put enough on here to 
keep them from blowing away while they're trying to do their thing. And we're going to move this pot right over here so we can start on the next one. Okay, so here is our stacking pots of lettuce. We've got that Grand Rapids lettuce on the two bottom. The next two have the Great Lakes lettuce. And this top one right here is where I have the experimental iceberg lettuce growing. This over here is the stack of kale that I did uh, yesterday. And of course I still have my broccoli and Brussels sprouts and my avocado trees growing. So I'm going to go ahead and water everything real quick. And uh, when you're trying to get seeds to sprout like this, you need to keep them damp most of the time. You need good water in there. Um, because th when things are in pots, they tend to dry out way faster than if you water it in the ground. Um, and so I water my little pots where I'm trying to keep everything started and going uh, every single day. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garden today, guys. Um, that's September's update, and uh, I will be back with another garden update in October. Unless some crazy things start happening, then I may update y'all sooner. But uh, for right now, we're going to look at an update in October for the garden. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps out our little farm more than you can imagine. And I'll see you guys next time.